I've been using this tiny SA spectrum analyzer to visualize radio signals for some time, and while it's a great tool, it's far too small. So I recently upgraded to the tiny SA Ultra Plus ZS406 handheld spectrum analyzer, the main reason being the much bigger screen. From time to time I demo products on the channel, and when I do, I don't like reeling off the specs and telling you what every single button and function does. Plenty of other channels do this, and very nicely too. What I prefer to do, is actually show you the item out in the field, and the cool stuff you can do with it. By the way, if you want to pick one of these up, then I'll leave a link in the description below to where I got mine. Very quickly, this has a 4 inch IPS TFT LCD screen, and has a frequency range of 100kHz to 5.4GHz, and if you visit the website on screen, you can unlock it even further, so you can now view a huge chunk of spectrum. What's also handy is the ability to save screen captures to the micro SD card, but it doesn't save the waterfall view, which is a bit annoying. It has audio out, so you can actually hear what you're listening to. It has a built-in lithium polymer 3.7 volt, 5000 mAh battery, and supports USB-C charging. The internal LNA gain boosts signals up to 20 dB for enhanced signal clarity, and it comes with a little antenna, some SMA pigtails for connecting other antennas, and a stylus for navigating the menus. I thought what better way to demo what equipment like this can do, than to take you over to a transmitter site, and sniff out all of the varied signals radiating from it. We'll look at police, digital television and radio, mobile phones, and some other really cool stuff. So I took the tiny SA over to Glossop Relay, a radio tower that serves the villages of Glossop and Dinting Vale, and possibly Hadfield and Padfield, as a television and digital radio relay. There's plenty of signals radiating from here, so it's a good opportunity to go through them all, and actually visualise what's going on here. Glossop came on the air in 1973, originally feeding BBC One and Two North West and ITV from Winter Hill. Channel 4 was added in September 1984. The homes it serves all sit behind the hill that blocks the path from Winter Hill, the main regional transmitter, hence the need for a relay. This huge structure at the top is the UHF cylinder. Inside the cylinder is a cardioid antenna. This is what provides the television signal to the homes it serves. It was updated to its current form when the site was switched from analogue to digital on the 4th of November and 2nd of December 2009. It relays BBC A Channel 28, D3 and 4 Channel 25 and BBC B Channel 22 from Winter Hill. BBC A Channel 28 is 530 MHz. And here you can see a nice wide signal on the tiny SA. Zooming in, we can see a much clearer view of the 50 watt signal. You'll notice that there's another strong signal to the left. That's D3 and 4, channel 25 on 506 MHz. This is also a 50 watt multiplex. Moving down the band, we come to the BBC B multiplex on channel 22. This sits on 482 MHz. I zoomed in a bit further to show you a more detailed view of the 50 watt signal. So those are the digital television signals being relayed from Glossop, but how did they get there in the first place? These trough antennas face Winter Hill. They receive the signal from there, which is relayed out of the cylinder at the top of the tower at Glossop. The top one is the oldest, and the bottom one was added in 2022. This replaced a trough identical to the top one. I can't be certain if the top one is still in use, but the bottom one certainly is. Near the top is the DAB radio transmit antenna that sends BBC National Channel 12B and Digital 1 Channel 11D. This was installed in 2015. It's a two bay antenna that sends both signals simultaneously at 800 watts. The BBC National Multiplex on Channel 12B sits on 225.648 MHz. You can see other multiplexes either side. If we zoom out, you'll still notice 12B, but this time we're interested in the Digital 1 multiplex on channel 11D. It's on 222.064 MHz. For some reason it's a weaker signal than 12B. I know there's a combiner in use to radiate 800 watts out of the antenna, but I don't know if the power is split unevenly between each of the two bays. 
I'm sure somebody can clear this up in the comments. Just further down is this two element Bantu Yagi which transmits greatest hits radio on one of 6.4 at 250 watts. It's clearly the strongest signal because we're so close to the antenna and other adjacent stations from more distant towers can be seen either side. At the same level we have three of these white antennas which are Tetra Airwave. This is the police's radio system on UHF, and while they tend to use these four stack dipole arrays in groups of three, they often use these white stick antennas instead. There's another two near the bottom of the tower too. The police network is extremely complex, I've covered this in detail in a video I'll link below, but it's clear to see the two different signals from the two sets of antennas at the midsection and bottom of the tower. Moving below the cellular antennas, on the same level as the troughs we looked at earlier, is this Bantu Yagi. The view from this angle shows a damaged reflector. I'm pretty sure this is the high peak radio receive aerial that picked up the feed from Booksworth, which was then relayed on what is now the Greatest Hits radio aerial on 106.4. It was bought out by Greatest Hits radio and the feed is now fed by fibre. The large dish at ground level is likely the DAB feed that's relayed out using the two bay DAB antenna near the top of the tower. All of this is mobile phone stuff and while it's not easy to work out exactly what antenna is doing what, we can easily sniff out the signals and do some detective work later to identify them. These are the EE transmissions and we're focusing on downlinks only. You can see neighbouring transmissions on adjacent frequencies from Glossop and other nearby masts. This is the Vodafone offering and more of these are in the sub gigahertz range. O2 also has a sizeable presence at Glossop. And finally the only three transmission I could find. So I hope you enjoyed this more detailed look at a radio tower and what everything does on it, but this time using the tiny SA spectrum analyzer. It's a fantastic bit of kit to actually visualize what's going on at radio sites. Some of them can be very complex, so tools like this really help put some order to the mass of RF flowing out of here. If you want to check out the tiny SA for yourself, I'll leave a link in the description below. If you want to see more transmitter site tours, then there's a whole playlist down there too.